instead of obsessing on the fact that you can't have all these carbohydrates that you crave or you can't have whatever it is that quote unquote you're not allowed to have you know whether it be pizza or rice or pasta you know you can pine for those things and, and dwell on the fact that you can't have any of that stuff but how about instead of focusing on what you can't have enjoy and focus the things that you can have because they're great choices love the things you can have Inform Nation, this is episode 45 of the Inform Fitness Podcast with New York Times bestselling author Adam Zickerman. I'm Tim Edwards with the Inbound Podcasting Network and a client of Inform Fitness. For almost 50 episodes, we have discussed the many benefits of participating in a slow motion, high intensity strength training protocol like the one offered at several Inform Fitness locations across the country. One of those benefits, of course, include weight or fat loss. To accomplish your fat loss goals, the efforts don't stop after your 20 to 30 minutes a week at an Inform Fitness gym. Your habits, of course, in the kitchen are equally as important. So if you want to lose weight, you've heard it many times here on the podcast that you can't out-exercise a bad diet. So today, Adam Zickerman and Mike Rogers, the general manager of the Inform Fitness location in New York City, provide some easy-to-follow nutritional tips to expedite the results you're looking for. All right. Well, this uh, this is going to be an interesting podcast. I hope uh, it's going to be a little bit di- it's going to be a little bit different, but never sort of know. cover. You never know. It's going to cover a little bit of a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yes. We're talking about food. Yeah, and it's going to be a little bit of a so food thing, exactly. We have a pinch of this and a pinch of that. A dash of this <laughs> teaspoon and a, and a here. Of this. Exactly. And you're covering um, pillar number two, right? Nutrition. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know something. Very you know, good. we talk about carbs in some other uh, <laughs> other uh, podcasts in the past. We've mentioned carbs, and uh, we've my talked ketogenic about, diet. Yeah, the ketogenic diet, big one. We get from clients all the time who try to tackle a no carb diet, a ketogenic diet, a paleo diet, a low carb diet, and uh, sometimes, you know, I mean, the references are all over the internet. There's books everywhere to like go into any of these things, but sometimes people are just they're on the run and they don't have time to get to these things, or they're just overwhelmed by all of the content. So what we decide we want to do is do a quick podcast and throw out some ideas. Uh, to answer some of those questions, because oftentimes people are like, what can I have for breakfast? What can I have for lunch? What can I have for dinner? We just want to throw out some quick recipes, some quick ideas that are easy to prepare, that don't take that much time, and I think will uh, then accommodate the the no carb or the low carb, whatever variation you're doing. So basically, we want to say, all right, so the way you start with this low carb diet is everything opposite of Rachel Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> now, now, guys, so the question I have is, so some of these tips that we're talking about today, are these for people who are looking to lose weight or sustain or just to kind of support uh, the Power 10 workout? I think, well, there's a lot of reasons why people go on no-carb diets or low-carb diets. It's not just uh, – I think the most – the typical reason is to lose fat, try to drop fat. Um, I think just before we go into the recipes, you just want to talk just quickly about the relationship between carbohydrate intake, insulin, and fat regulation. But instead of talking really theory, I think what we want to talk about is really practical things, more like, you know, what to eat, basically. What, what does that entail? I mean, we all talk about low carbs, but what does that mean? Like, I was having this conversation today with somebody about low carb and, and not really un- fully understanding. She's like, does that mean, that, can I have any rice? Can I have any alcohol? Can I have any? I mean, like, I was like, no, 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 no. I mean. But like fruit or carbohydrates, right? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. And yeah. Well, you know something, the end all be all to someone's nutrition I think it, it involves a lot of factors, and I think the reason why a lot of people do no-carb or low-carb diets is to control insulin, which is one part of the whole puzzle, and I think these suggestions are going to tackle that one piece of the puzzle, because I think for a lot of people, like Tim, you just said like you've uh, had some a, f- a few months of poor eating Indeed. and that you've uh, got back onto the wagon uh, where you just cut out carbohydrates and you lost six pounds recently. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I don't think that's going to answer all of your nutritional concerns or all of your health concerns, but it's a, it's a big piece of the puzzle. And I think just doing that gets the fat burning going. And uh, well, I think we've, kept, we've tackled the why and the theory and the science in the past. This one, let's just talk about what suggestions we can give you mm-hmm. right off the bat. Bring it home. Bring it all home. Yeah. So, I mean, real, just diving right into it, breakfast ideas are, I think, this is the hardest thing for a lot of people to get into because 
the most conve- conventional breakfast food is very, very refined food, refined carbohydrate, carb heavy stuff. Yeah, so why don't we skip it? <laughs> well, if yeah, you're if you're doing it. some intermittent so, fasting, then you and would. there you go. Okay, <laughs> done. Next podcast. <laughs> That's what I meant. Part of part, of, I think, part of weight, especially for weight loss, I, I think a very powerful strategy is intermittent fasting. And I think the easiest meal to skip, at least for me and many others that I talk to, is breakfast because a lot of people aren't really hungry as soon as they wake up, and, and you're already like eight hours or so into your fast, right? So you only have like eight hours to go. So if you're waking up like five, six in the morning, you know, you're already at 14 hours by late morning or early afternoon. And that's doable as opposed to eating lunch and not having to eat dinner and like having to go to sleep hungry and like, you know, waking up absolutely famished. So I I think if you're going to skip a meal for intermittent fasting, I think breakfast is the meal to skip. Not to mention what Mike was just saying, it's hard to find a lot of low carb breakfast choices if especially if you don't like eggs for example which yeah, is I mean, the that, that's the thing is people when they try to start doing something but they don't want to do the fast yet or something that resembles that people who do eat breakfast or want to have breakfast they go to eggs and they get tired of eggs very very fast and so uh, pun intended <laughs> and um <laughs> i think where are the, where are the alternatives for that i think i mean you, re- you we do run into trouble with that because conventional breakfast options are uh, involved toast, like a bacon, egg, and cheese so sandwich. What's, so what's on your list here for breakfast foods? Yeah, you know, so, you you know something? I mean, like, it really, it's it's right around eggs. <laughs> All <laughs> like, right. Well, well, I got some suggestions besides eggs, by the way, because, you know, there are a lot of foods that aren't just for lunch or dinner anymore. For some reason, we, we've categorized certain foods for breakfast and certain foods for lunch and dinner. For example, we have, always have some bone broth on the stove here for clients to enjoy. And uh, very often... In the morning, I'll say, hey, you want, you want some uh, chicken broth or some beef broth? They're like, at 7 o'clock in the morning, no thank you. I'm like, what's wrong with having some beef broth at 7 o'clock in the morning? It, it, you know, it, it's fantastic. But some people just they can't get their head around that. But bacon, eggs, and sausage, they can get their head around for breakfast. So, like, it's just a, a, a psychological thing. So, my point is, you know, there are a lot of things you can eat for breakfast that aren't necessarily classified as breakfast foods. I mean, right. like... I'll have a salad with tuna fish, for example, for breakfast. Why not? You know, you can have that, anything that's the for ba- breakfast. That's the barrier. And getting to that is, I mean, if you're not going to do an omelet, which is your traditional breakfast option or something like that, or scrambled eggs or eggs benedict or something like that, <laughs> the, other, the other breakfast options are toast, bagels, pancakes, waffles, French toast. All those things are cereal. Oatmeal is all carbs, 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 and carbs. And you miss, uh, and and carbs. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, I forgot about that. I'll, I will not miss that one next time. <laughs> but the um, but the thing is, go, we'll get into lunches and dinners. But leftover of the other meals are the nutrients you want to take in. Just you got to erase some of those uh, that you have to have breakfast for breakfast, or what you've imagined breakfast to be breakfast. Well, part of that's um, just the ritual that people have grown accustomed to, right? And just abandoning the ritual of breakfast foods, like Adam said, is really no different. If you what you know, if you if you take a, a typical breakfast meal, if you look at the components of it, it's no different than what you're doing at lunch or dinner, based upon your carbohydrate the, or protein. The breakfast sausage. I mean, like in the morning, you'll have breakfast sausage. In the <laughs> afternoon, you'll have chorizo or something like that. They're both <laughs> sausages for crying out loud. Like, I'll, I'll tell you what, though. People get crazy. You can't have chorizo in the morning, and you can't have breakfast sausage for lunch? <laughs> I <laughs> dare you. When we're up at the front and we're eating Do breakfast. It. See what happens. When we're up at the front and eating <laughs> breakfast in the morning, I oftentimes have a salad. And people are like, salad for breakfast? <laughs> and the thing is, the association with like vegetables with breakfast is really like a crazy idea for everyone, but it's like, why not? Why the hell not? You know, you're having them for lunch. You're having them for dinner. You have no problem having them, like the salad with the chicken well, and the, for lunch. Well, pancakes for breakfast. Why is why is that so good? Pancakes. I mean, what's the what's the suffix of pancakes? Cake. <laughs> you even you having cake for breakfast? I mean, why are pancakes so special? There, it's cake. You're not supposed to have cake for breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what a donut is, for goodness sakes, right? Donut really, is, is, is cake. Is, is, is a cake. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but on the other side of that, too, you know, it, when you're not eating right, to have tacos or, or a hamburger for breakfast, how is that any different than having uh, hash browns with, with sausage? Yeah, sure. You know, it's just the same. So sure. just try to abandon with that ritualistic breakfast mentality. Uh, and bone broth, gosh, that's perfect, especially if you're intermittent fasting as well. Food is food. Mm. No, but, I mean, but seriously, how, I mean, I think, People get overwhelmed with the idea of 
say you're gonna prepare a salad for work, like say you're gonna do this at home, right, to try to save money or for whatever, it's literally get some mixed greens or some spinach. You put it in a in a Tupperware. You chop a tomato that takes about, you know, what, 25 seconds to chop a tomato. It takes, you know, uh, a, a same thing about, uh, Put an avocado 45 seconds mm-hmm. to chop up an avocado, a little bit of cucumber. And a, I mean, lefto- and a leftover chicken breast right? from, from dinner the night before. Exactly. Boom, done. It's an easy thing. That's your breakfast the next day. Exactly. And, and, and you know, something like, you know, go to Whole Foods, every Whole Foods now. What I, this is something I do at least well, once every two weeks, sometimes every week, is for seven ninety nine you can get a rotisserie chicken. You have like the legs for lunch one day and then take a few minutes, chop up the rest. Add some celery, a little bit of mayonnaise, and you could have chicken salad on top of a salad for dinner later that night and for breakfast and lunch the next day. The thing is, I think you can get tired if you're having that all the time, but it's a very easy, very inexpensive, very easy thing to prepare food option. And notice just, that you said mayonnaise as well with the chicken, a little bit of mayonnaise, but people would think of mayo as an absolute no-no in a diet. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. No, the thing, yeah, that's fine. Some officer and gentleman. That's right. <laughs> but uh, the thing about mayo is it's a fat. It's known as a fat, right? Mm-hmm. So everyone's so scared of fat. So I'm not worried about mayonnaise, especially the mayonnaise that's not made with canola oil like mm-hmm. Hellman's, uh, but the mayonnaise that's made nowadays with avocado oils and all these kind of oils that are not refined oils like can- canola oil. These things are great. So I'm not. We're not afraid of mayonnaise. You know. So you want to put a little mayonnaise with your uh, hard boiled eggs or. Mm-hmm. If you try to avoid carbs, mayo doesn't qualify. That's right. Yeah, but carbs. So, yeah, mayo is good. Mayo is fat, and fat's good. I should say it qualifies to eat. eat sorry, yeah. I should yeah. Say. yeah. Um, and that reminds me of the episode that we had um, several weeks back regarding the uh, American Heart Association, right? And and the, some of the bogus claims that have and are continuing to be made. Well, again, you know, we kind of feel that fat must be bad for us, so we start manipulating data just to support our bias that can't be good for you right and and that bias is exactly that a bias and science has not bore that out you know science has not shown that that is what's the cause of cardiovascular disease as much as as much as society for some reason wants that to be the truth it just as so far has not been shown to be the truth well that the, the thing is it, it's getting thrown out as something that uh, that is an absolute no-no and the thing is your your biomarkers could be dictated by a lot of different things. Fat may need to be dosed properly. You may not. You may there may be a certain amount of it that you should or shouldn't be eating mm-hmm. for your overall health. Calories. But, uh, so, Mike. So we established that we're skipping breakfast. So, uh, <laughs> so, so now let's get to lunch. What what what, what, are, what do you talk about and what do you eat and what do you recommend for your clients for lunch? You know, it, make things simple for me. Once again, a big mixture of vegetables with a protein. It's oftentimes what I prepared last night for dinner, and I make enough for to go to lunch again. It's a it's. There's really nothing that needs to be specific for any time of the day. The easy things for people who go to work all the time, oftentimes if they didn't prepare their stuff, a best thing, the best thing to do is get a piece of salmon, get a chi- uh, piece of chicken with some asparagus, with some sautéed mushrooms, with a, a side salad, that type of thing. Or get a, a chopped salad. I mean, I know this is not a mystery to everybody, but the thing is, I think you just got to develop a habit to doing this type of things. You got to get rid of feeling like a sandwich is necessary and all that kind well, of stuff. Well, you mentioned chopped salad. But, you know, we, I go to Subway a lot, actually. I love their chopped salad. I think it's actually the, like the perfect lunch for me and it's filling as well yeah you know the the thing is most of my routine stuff is i prepare a big my wife and i we cook a relatively big dinner or we cook stuff that we can actually have for the next day or two and it whether it's breakfast lunch or dinner it really doesn't matter to me i throw it in the tupperware and i have it uh like that frittata you were telling me about that's that's another thing that's a great that's a great thing but we're back to eggs again but again eggs are not just for breakfast either so mike had this frittata you know that was made in like this you know, nine inch uh, pie pan, you know, and you would cut it like a pie and have, you know, he portioned it out for himself all week. I, I had it, I literally had it on uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And it, I honestly, it's, it's also just for whatever reason, I know it's eggs and vegetables, but it, it, in the context of what you're eating it in, it really tastes like, you know, like a, like a little piece of pizza. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just yeah. like cut up. And he eats it cold too, which is actually good. And it sounds yeah. filling too with all of that protein in there. It was filling. I mean, uh, you know, it is. It is. It was. It was. It was great. I you actually put mayonnaise on top of it too. Even no, better. <laughs> mayonnaise. No. I mean, you know, something. That, but like going back to like quick things you can get at the grocery store if you have a Trader Joe's or something like that. Like my wife and I have been recently making 
like a, a like an Asian style steak on top of cauliflower rice and what does Asian style mean? I think that there's uh, there's sesame, there's some <laughs> ginger, there's some teriyaki mm-hmm. flavors and gotcha. things like that. Um, oftentimes, a teriyaki marinade mm-hmm. is probably actually a high carbohydrate yeah. like food. Yeah, stay away from the teriyaki. But you know, so, but you know something. I think, uh, I mean, uh, you know, this I is, like this, saying this, it. Is it a no carb? That's not a no carb option. But you know something. I think if you just Coat it in that, like for mm. in a plastic bag, the meat on top uh, <laughs> with a marinade, and then you take it out and then you cook it. You're mostly just getting flavors, and I would say that the carb count is still going to be extremely low, um, despite the fact that you are having a sweet marinade on the beef. Well, you just what mentioned you carb count. Let's we, we didn't really start with that. What what is a good carb count, or is that specific to each individual? It's specific, but there's a range. I mean, uh, I would say uh, t- to really consider it uh, low carb, you'd have to stay anywhere between 50 grams, 40 grams of carbohydrate, carbohydrates on the low side, and not much more than 100 grams on the high side. And, that, and 100 grams is a lot for a lot of people, but some people can tolerate that, especially if they're very active. You know, so I would say. Start with like 75 grams and see how that works for you and then work your way up or down. And you're including the carbs in the in vegetables as well, too, not, of not just we in, turn out yeah. a lot. I mean, mm-hmm. you'd have to eat like a pound. You can't eat that much broccoli to, to overdose on carbs. On the other hand, you know, you can easily overdose on, on, on bananas, which is a fruit. I know it's not a vegetable, but fruits, you know, a lot of people... They didn't realize how starchy uh, a banana is. Even an apple has like 20 some odd yeah, grams. No, actually, I checked wow. this out this past week. Our my au pair, who's you know making efforts to try to lose uh, to lose weight a little bit, and she, like, amazing. I love her to death, but totally misinformed on <laughs> what was what. She made a uh, a shake, and it comprised two <laughs> apples, one regular size banana ice and water and i said and i just i just quickly referenced I said, in a jar of peanut butter <laughs> no, no no peanut butter but a medium-sized <laughs> apple is about 19 grams of carbohydrate wow. and uh and so she had two of those that's 38 right there <laughs> and then she had a banana which is 14 grams that's of it. carbohydrate she just went over her so limit she went like 52 grams of carb i said i said do you realize there's more grams of Carbohydrate there that it, that in a Snickers bar, and she was stunned. I said, "I said you you're getting vitamins, you're getting nutrients, you're getting fiber, lots of good things that your body does want, but you're you're putting way too much sugar in, into this diet right now." And so we uh, I helped her modify that to a smaller degree. But um, other little quick suggestions. Once again, this could qualify as lunch and dinner. Very easy thing like having like turkey meatballs. Which you get prepared either at the deli or somewhere, or without you the breadcrumbs, without you know, mm-hmm. without or very little breadcrumbs, very little. Um, That's what my wife says when she makes meatballs. I'm like, are any breadcrumbs in it? Very little. Very Don't little. worry about it. Very little. Yeah. I, I mean, like, why do you have to use it? Don't worry about it. I didn't put that much in there. The thing is, the depending on your goals, sometimes you have to be very conscious of what these counts are. And other times, I think a little bit's not going to kill you on any of these. All right, And you know, putting that turkey meatballs or regular meatballs on top of zucchini spaghetti is mm. just a great thing. And you could, you could do that with a tomato sauce. You could do that with garlic and olive oil. And it's just uh, – that is very easy. takes no time to saute that. And you know, tastes really good, too. Based, that sounds zucchini, great. Put through a spiralizer or the vegetti. And you make it looks like pasta. Mm-hmm. Like Dan and I, Dan's one of the other trainers here, and I, we what we create what's called a meat bucket. <laughs> right? So like, well, I'll, like I'll cook like Sounds fifteen. Gross. I'll, yeah, okay, does, I'll, yeah. I'll cook fifteen. Dad does this too. Like fifteen chicken thighs, you know, and they would chop it all up, throw it in a big Tupperware, and have it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner over the course of three days. You know, hey, and, that's kosher. Yeah, I <laughs> and, you know, but, you know, mix in mix in with sautéed peppers and onions. You know, you mm-hmm. could do uh, steak fajitas, bucket. chicken fajitas, and stuff. You know, on top of beds of lettuce. You know, so fajitas. You mean without the tacos. without without the tacos or the tortillas? It's just mm-hmm. basically a fajita salad, but it's really just uh, things like that. But this, my point is, it really if you, you go to the market and you have these ingredients, it really takes almost no time to prepare these things, and you're getting a protein. You get some fish. You know, like baking some salmon doesn't take that long. It's funny. I talk to people all the time about making this, making that. And they think I have, they look at me like I have 10 heads on my shoulders because like, yeah, just throw some salmon in the oven. It, it, you know, it only it's takes 10 salt, minutes. pepper, so, some yeah. garlic powder. Like, it's are like, you kidding me? I'm not going to do that. I mean, I got to go get the damn salmon. How am I going to do that? You know? Well, yeah, so, I mean, it's, uh, you 
then go get the damn sandwich. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's the same as getting the 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 steak <laughs> or the chicken, right? I mean, yeah, how hard is I salmon know, to find? People, people have fear of cooking fish, and I understand. I get it. You know, you know everybody has particularities. You got to find it. I mean, yeah. uh, and that's it. You know, I mean, uh, I mean, some some of I have a client who I'm thinking of at the moment who hates. When I say, oh, why'd you try this? I hate that. I hate mushrooms. I hate broccoli. I hate zucchini. I hate tomatoes. She's a good candidate for fasting, then. It is. is Yeah, but if you look at your food as 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 medicine, and not, you know, we don't always have to look at our meals like this is going to be something I'm going to enjoy. Yeah, from time to time, but but. just look at it as fuel or almost as medicine, and then you're full and you move on to the next meal. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that simple. But I don't want to ask people to do that. I mean, I, I just, we have a trainer down in Virginia that uh, is like that. I mean, he honestly has no emotional attachment to food at all. Wow, that would be nice. At all. Wow. Like, to him, it is purely fuel, honestly. And I was like, I'm a little envious of that. But then of again, course. I'm not because I enjoy food so much. And you can still. This is the way I look at it, as opposed to saying, you know, um, look at food for, as fuel, because that that's a tall task when you've grown up in a family that, you know, no. and, you know, you're an adult and food was a center of your universe and your familial and your friends I mean, get I'm together. I'm Italian. Like I know that. all about what you're talking about. It is true. It's, it is a that, part that, of that, your that's a tall fiber. Idea. However, yeah. however, I think of, uh, I think it's a Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young song, you know, who, who sings, uh. If you can't be with the one you love, love the one you with. You nailed that, it. You nailed it. I did, right? Okay, yeah. so mm-hmm. that's how I look at it. Like, instead of obsessing on the fact that you can have all these carbohydrates that you crave, or you can't have whatever it is that, quote unquote, you're not allowed to have, you know, whether it be pizza or rice or pasta, you know, you can, you can pine for those things and, and dwell on the fact that you can't have any of that stuff. But how about instead of focusing on what you can't have, Enjoy and focus the things that you can have because there are great choices that you can have and love the one you're with. That's where I get this from. So instead of, you know, pining for the one you can have, love the things you can have and, and fo- put your attention on that. That's easier than just looking at food as fuel. I mean, now if you just think about what you want and what you can enjoy, like I enjoy meatloaf, you know, without the breadcrumbs over a bed of uh, spaghetti squash. Uh, I love a slow cooked brisket, grass fed brisket with you know with a side of cauliflower rice to suck up the sauce. You know, uh, cauliflower rice is like a staple in our house at this point. Yeah, we yeah. have it. We have it at least three times a week. The catch is that you probably have to prepare a little bit more to enjoy these foods, and that that's the catch, I guess. It's hard to just do takeout all the time and adhere to this, but if you take a little time, if you do what Mike suggested and prepare food over the weekends, that Things that can last, like like a brisket. You know, you put a six pound brisket in, in, in a Dutch oven, and you got you got yourself, or or a stew of some sort, or a chili of some sort. Now you have that. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Or frittata. You you make hard boiled eggs. You keep a, you keep a dozen hard boiled eggs in, in the fridge. Make egg salad. Make egg salad, or make uh, if you're ambitious, make some deviled eggs. And God forbid you put a little bit of sweet relish it, in there. It's not going to you know. It's a small investment that gets you your time back throughout the week. Is to do something that you could actually prepare. You know, Mike, I have a couple of more examples that I can use from, from my book, Power of Ten. And if you don't like eggs, by the way, some plain yogurt, full fat yogurt, you know, and put some uh, real fruit in there, like blueberries or raspberries if they're in season. All right. Any of the nut butters would be great. You know, put that on, on some vegetables like celery or things that, you know, carrot, whatever, you know, just some, some kind of vegetable that you like to spread That's your, a great your snack. nut butters I do on. that all the time. Mm. Yeah. You know, just try to avoid putting your peanut butter on like, you know, bread and bagels and stuff like that. Um, nuts, all kinds of nuts, preferably the ones that aren't coated in sugar. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> we mentioned hard boiled eggs. Another breakfast food that I like uh, is, is cottage cheese. And I put a little bit of pineapple in there. And, and again, you know, a couple of slices of pineapple. Pineapple is a strong flavored fruit. So you don't need a lot of pineapple to get the flavor you need. So you'd have a couple of little, little, those little wedges of pineapple in your, in your cottage cheese. That's a good breakfast. And it's not going to throw you over 50 grams of carbohydrates. Not that this is relevant to the podcast, but I just wanted to say that uh, cottage cheese is on the short list of things I just can't stand in the world. <laughs> mm. I don't like cottage cheese. It's uh, funny thing. <laughs> so everybody else, more for you. You enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I, I don't like cottage cheese either unless it has, honestly, it can only have pineapple with it or else I won't like it. 
All right, another good thing, a turkey wrap, like two or three slices of fresh turkey wrapped in some romaine, romaine lettuce or some kind of lettuce. That's with, a good one. With maybe mm. some mustard, maybe throw a slice of, uh, you know, a small thin slice of uh, Swiss cheese in there. That would be great. Now, some of my uh, colleagues here love sardines, opening up a can of sardines. If you like sardines, go for it. Uh, I, that's not my bag, but, you know, some love people that. like that. Love so. that, but you got to be that? aware of your neighbors. A lot of salt, too, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spices. Use spices is another suggestion. Uh, there's a new book out that I want to tell you about. I'm actually, and this is not to promote me, but I love this book. It's called The Spice Diet. All right. So it was like Mike said earlier, you know, let's face it, you know, there's chicken, there's beef, vegetables, there's fish, fish, vegetables. I mean, we know what they are. And unless you're some weird part of the world, you know, that, that eats other things besides those things, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, we're always eating the same things, veg, all kinds of vegetables, right? So the thing is, know what you can change. You can change the spices, the way you cook these things. And there's a book called The Spice Diet by Chef Judson Todd Allen. Uh, he is the private chef for Steve Harvey. And Steve Harvey actually wrote the forward to this book. And uh, I was asked to write the exercise part this book so actually i'm actually in this book but that's not why i'm recommending it it's just a great way to use flavor to you know to fight cravings and to kind of change things up a little bit even though you're always, always having chicken so i recommend you picking up that book it's, it's fantastic and adam we'll have a link to that in the show notes and it's also that book is available on audible too and new sponsor of the informed fitness podcast so we'll go ahead and include links to that in the show notes fantastic so anyway spices use spices to to change things around and the reason i thought of that because you know like broccoli it's boring right but if you put sesame oil on, on some broccoli some garlic some salt some pepper you know, you throw in some walnuts in there. That tastes good. You know, so so walnuts and broccoli, com combining nuts and vegetables is always a fantastic thing to do. Uh, and it makes things uh, a little bit more interesting. Baked Salt chicken, uh, rotisserie chicken or, or baked chicken. You can spice that up many different ways to change it around a little bit. But you know what? I, you know, I love chicken with a little bit of honey. That's an interesting combo. I've never call heard me, of that before. Call me blasphemous, <laughs> you know. Honey is a carb, obviously. It's pure sugar. But the thing about honey is that you don't need a lot of it again. And again, if you're generally a very low-carb diet, and if you put some honey... That's a you, southern fried if you, chicken if you, thing. If you, not the fried... If you dip your <laughs> rotisserie <laughs> chicken in a little bit of honey, you know, it adds a little bit of sweetness, but you're not going... Over the gram that's, that's why I, th I think I think like having a few flavors that are a little bit sweet, as long as you keep them very minimal, you're not going to break the bank. Oftentimes, so there are some examples that you're going to find in my book. And the book, of course, is Power of Ten: The Once a Week Slow Motion Fitness Revolution. Pick it up today at a bookstore near you, or it's just a click away and available at Amazon. There will be a link for the book in the show notes. For less than about 15 bucks, you'll find some additional nutritional tips and a handy list of foods that support the Power of 10 protocol discussed here in the podcast. You'll also find some effective exercise demonstrations so you can perform these exercises in the comfort of your own home. Or if you live close to one of the several informed fitness locations across the country, there's a free workout waiting for you. Simply click the link in the show notes to their website, informfitness.com, Click the Try Us Free button right there on the home page, fill out the form, pick your location, and enjoy a slow-motion, high-intensity, full-body workout in just 20 minutes for free. You'll feel great. At the time of this recording, it's been about, say, four or so hours since my last workout, and I feel amazing. You will, too. If you're a new listener to the podcast, we appreciate that and would invite you to please hit subscribe in whichever podcast app you might be listening we have close to 50 episodes for you to binge listen with more coming almost every single week. We'd also appreciate it if you took a couple of moments to leave us a review. Until next time, for Adam Zickerman and Mike Rogers of Inform Fitness, I'm Tim Edwards with the Inbound Podcasting Network.